All right, hello folks. I'm back, and the little handheld is working, so that's cool. Um, <coughs> I just uh, washed up the um, test cup I did, and it came out really good. So I'm happy with that. There's the. Uh, we gotta go this way. There's the. Let's get rid of my face track. Did you lose my face? Alright. So here is the little name I did. And that red line in there is because I bumped the machine. So don't bump your machine. And then I went ahead and did the guy's logo on there. And that came out nice and pretty and straight. So I'm happy. Um, I, I timed it. I, I have to ask, I'm going to send Daniel a message and ask him. Um, I don't know if this is just me or if I didn't start the clock on time, but it seemed like it went about three minutes faster than normal. So, I don't know if uh, the stepper motor had anything to do with that, or, or just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to time this one when we do it. So, um, I forgot to grab one. So let's go. I'm not going to do that blue one I had over there. That was one of mine. Um, let me spin you around and see this mess. <laughs> That's what happens when you unload a bunch of crap in a hurry. There is 102 tumblers. In case you wondered what those are like. Now we have a basically a stack of six of every color. 17 colors so you can do math now this stack has 12 because they don't like the stainless steel which is good because i don't want to have to spray it with ceramark all the time so um they don't like it for fingerprint issues so we'll start with pink and pink is a pain in the ass color so it's good to get it out of the way anyway um first let's go over how i'm going to set this machine up I'm going to stick you guys in the corner because this is very up close to the front. I might go ahead and push it back a little bit. But let me stick you guys here and see if this is going to work well. For, I'm gonna, I need to put some tape under these legs too because I know me and I know for a fact that I'm going to bump into this machine a lot. So... That ain't working out well. Let's stick you right here. There we go. That wrapped around pretty good, I think. So I'll have to spin you that way. Point you down. Spin you that way. Alright. So let me take up my magnets here. Now, if you guys don't have magnets I highly recommend you getting some these I got at Lowe's these little square deals or square <laughs> these rectangles I got these at Lowe's so a couple bucks for a pack of two and they're really strong so um, so strong and in fact that uh, if you get them too close to each other they will come together really fast and and uh, they'll break like this one did so um, they're pretty strong so I use these um, typically I will put two on the front two in the back to keep it from going up and down and then one on the sides to keep them going left and right so how I am going to square this thing up is um, I don't really want to reach over too far It's not, I don't want to go back that far. This is actually going to, actually I can keep it up close. The camera will pick that up. Alright, so that's cool. Um, let's see. What I normally do, now this one is up a little higher. Actually, let me, I'm going to press pause for a minute and put tape under here because this thing moves way too easy. I'll be right back. Alright, that didn't take long, so I'm back. So, I'm not going to undo the camera again because 
Y'all know I'm tired of fighting with this thing. But um, all I did was uh, roll some tape over outward and stick it under the feet. So now I, she won't bump. She won't move when I bump her. So um, I need to buy me a larger framing square. I've got a little baby one. But typically what I will do is put it. put it here and what I like about these long legs over here is that we can get her perfectly square with the legs right and normally I'll do this the other way and I'll have it further this way but I really don't want to be reaching over to the cups because that's going to increase my chance to bump the machine so it's closer so I'm gonna to have to do it this way but I don't want the camera in the way yet so I'm gonna explain it I'll put it here I'll have this cross member on this side I'll, I'll keep this square to that and then I'll bring it forward until it touches the frame then I'll go over here on this side and do the same thing and that's a little bit crooked so I'll also come in here in the middle double check do the same thing and that will basically what that does is square up the frame of the rotary to the cross member of the laser yeah so that's why I didn't do it right now because you guys aren't gonna be able to see nothing so I square it up rather than trying to square it up to the edge over here I square it up to the cross member because that's already square anyway and plus that's where your laser is going back and forth right so you want to have it squared over the laser going back and forth one other thing you can do if you don't trust yourself doing that you can also turn the laser on and put your dot on the corner put your dot on the corner and then put your dot on the corner over here and then dot on the corner over here and move it until it hits and move it around and that will actually square up your laser as well so it's two different ways you can do it um, I will probably do both just to make sure because I don't want any movement once I get this thing set and I want to make sure it's square so I can just start popping these things off right so let me move that up a little bit so we can see that and um, I'm gonna put the flashlight down go ahead and turn this off square it up and then I'll come back on when I place the magnets one day I'll have a real camera set up where y'all can watch me do everything from afar but for now this is what we got all right we're back so I think I've got it squared and uh, that was more of a pain in the butt than I wanted it to be because of um, keeping it this close, trying to go backwards. The, the frame, the cross member is only flat one side, not the other, so I was hitting belts. So my square wouldn't work, my big frame in square wouldn't work, so I just used the laser to frame it up. So <clears throat> I'll double check it when we get a cup on there, make sure we're good. But what I do like about this is we have a lot of right angles here, so I can stick the magnets in there so I'll put pressure here to make sure I don't move it then I'll place a magnet here and then a magnet here and then one over here in this 90 degree corner and then one right here then I'm gonna put one over here and then one that way so then it won't move anyway and I gotta put the light in my mouth so I can't talk when I do that So you probably saw that I just moved it. These magnets are really strong and the honeycombs are grooved so sometimes there's pressure and I move the, the damn frames. So and I gotta check this again, so. Uh, good times.
That's where she needs to be. <clears throat> Alright, so there we go. Now, we'll throw another magnet on the back side. There we go. <clears throat> so she's in there. She ain't gonna move unless I really bump it. And uh, I don't, I don't ever hit this. And when I take the cups off and on, I don't put pressure on that. So um, I know there are a lot of better ways to do this, guys. But I just like using the magnets because they're not permanent. So I can just move stuff around anywhere I want. Uh, and again, when I'm not holding the flashlight and worrying about low light and all that garbage, I can frame this stuff up pretty quick. So. Um, but right now, I think she's good, so we're gonna put the camera, I mean, uh, the flashlight over here. <clears throat> that should give us enough light. I'm sure my hands will block it, but whatever. We're gonna put a pinky on. Let's get this up and over. Now, I know this... <clears throat> Shit. I really hate these little things. I need to get one of the other ones from Kobe because I hate these things. The little knobby deals are a pain in the ass. Um, so, this is more, again, now we're back in another demonstration of how I set up my tumblers. But, um, we're going to have to level it. So, we're still going to demonstrate this and the leveling capabilities. And it's going to really be cool to see... How well it does i'll magnet it up if i can level it without ruining the thing which makes me think since we've got such big long feet here i'm gonna go ahead and throw the big magnets on the two edges of the feet where'd my big magnets go so when i need extra power i got some of these bad boys these things are so strong that when they stick flat <laughs> nothing else there I gotta get a screwdriver in the middle to pry them up so they're pretty strong so I'm gonna stick him right there now that ain't moving and I don't think I'll just put the other one on the other side not worry about in a perfect world I'd want it opposite corner but that's where the other magnet is so I'm just gonna don't probably need these but there we go added support because I do have to level the thing and I don't want to move it so but again once I set the level I should not have to do that anymore so the whole you know I double check it around every 20 tumblers or so when I'm doing big batches just to make sure that nothing's gone out of whack or if when I'm cleaning one of the tumblers I notice that I have to clean it a little harder maybe then that means that my level might have gone out of whack so um, we'll, we'll check that but for now let's just get get one going a good old pinky see look I almost rested my elbows on the machine I, I gotta get out of the habit of doing that because I don't want to bump anything once I get this all lined up so typically what I do now this is all new to me I, I think what I'm gonna do is put palm pressure on here um, on the other rotary I would use thumb pressure but this is a little different so to keep it flush against the back side because I don't have one of the big bracket things I'm going to you know make sure she's on there keep palm pressure here so nothing moves and man this I, <laughs> I'm really having to do everything new I usually uh, use my fingers on that hand to tighten this and now I've got a it's it's exact opposite so that's funny I'm sure after a couple dozen I'll get in the swing of things but 
for now I'm not going to be as fast as I usually am until next week when my CO2 comes in and I got the, got the pie burn in the other room I wish I could hook the pie burn up to the X tool that'd be pretty neat what I'm doing here again if y'all haven't seen my other video I spin it when I tighten it I'm tightening it with this finger over here on the right hand um, and I, as I spin I'm making sure that the cup is flush with the uh, little arm because as much as level is important so is being square to the rotary I think we're all squared there so let's go ahead and tighten her up all right that's backwards tighten her that way rotator tighten her up now there's you gotta make sure you don't tighten too hard because again since nothing's permanent down here it is just magnets if I try to crank on it which you don't need to do anyway but out of habit um, if you try to crank on it you could throw off your your square so remember there's not a whole lot of weight on these things especially these little guys so you don't need a whole lot of pressure and there we go there is Mr. Pinky oh look at how perfectly round that is what I also look for when I'm spinning it is to see if it's, you know, wobbly. These little ones don't do it as much, but the big ones, you know, the big long water bottles can. But as I rotate her, man, that thing is, that thing is square. Cool. I like it. What I didn't do, which I usually do, is I usually mark center, top, and bottom on the cups with tape for my first one only just so I can get the laser head set where I want to make sure I'm on the top of the cup. So, I also usually mark my frame, but that's when I have my jig. Since I'm not using my jig, no point marking the frame because this could be in a different spot any day. So one little trick I do, um, I'll put my level, oh wait, first let's level this thing out, then we'll get to the trick. So if we look there, we are not level, right? Boys and girls, that's too bright, there we go. We are not anywhere near level. So, we get our handy dandy screwdriver. Ugh, which I left on the other desk. Alright, so I don't think I need to, but I'm going to go ahead and put a hand here, just because. But I bet you it would stay. But I'm going to put a hand here. I'm going to give that a little bit of loose. Set that down. And let's... Move this guy down. Oh, did I not loosen it enough? Nope. I told you earlier I had it pretty tight, so I didn't need it that tight. Alright, it's got to be loose now. So let's move her down to right there. That is level. So we'll take her up here, have a look, a little bit off. Put it at the back a little bit off. That's because it's tapered and bulbous. And what I've learned about these tumblers too, there's kind of a little bit of convex thing going on. So, like I said earlier, I don't always trust a little guy. So, because I've done these a ton and I know there's just some dip, dipping going on, I will uh, bring out the big boy, set him on top. And she's level. So I'm happy with that. Now what will really tell the tale is the first engrave when I go wash it. If it, you know, if, if this side's more clean than this side, then I didn't do it right. Or it wasn't level. So now that that's level, we just go back down here and tighten this little screw. Yeah, gotta watch myself in person, not on the camera. Tighten that up, and she's solid. She's not moving. Uh, look how downward that is, right? These these wine tumblers, man, they're crazy. But now this is perfectly flat. So now we have a perfectly flat engraving surface to engrave on. Now we're gonna set our height for the laser. Again. I'm going up one eighth inch. So those of you that don't know, watch my other video. I'll put a little dingy ding up here. But um, 
I always focus up on, on most things um, one eighth of an inch. It just makes everything better. I'm not going to get into the whole description now. So I stick a little one eighth inch piece of wood on there. Make sure I find the center of that because it does no good to engrave or uh, measure off to the side of it. So there we go. That's the center. She's happy. Now we're one eighth inch off the cup. And we're fumble fingers. All right. We are almost ready to rock and roll. I'll start cranking out some tumblies. So now I need to find the center line or topmost point of the cup because you don't want to engrave off even a couple millimeters to the side because then your laser head is not perpendicular to your cup. That will affect your engraving as well. Since I didn't mark center line ahead of time, uh, you can use this little bubble for that. What I do is I'll put the bubble on there until it's level so that the bubble is exactly in the middle sometimes it's really hard because there's not much you know play here when you're finding top center so cooperate with me little guy All right there we go almost almost come on you piece of shit Hey, there it is. All right, that's top center. So what I'll do is I'll turn the laser on fire. I'll stick my head over here on, on, on this side. You can't see my finger. Okay, there it is. Um, I'll stick my head over here on this side and look that way. And I'll move the laser head back and forth until the laser is dead center with that bubble. Then I know it's dead top center with a cup. Sounds silly, but it works. Right there now she's top center so we got the depth correct she's top center again this seems like a really involved setup process but you only have to do it once as long as you don't bump your machine or knock the hell out of your rotary after you're done even when you're changing the cups as long as you don't bump into anything and knock your laser head you don't got to do any of this again when you're doing a big batch anyway of the same cup so now what I do is I mark or not mark but I move this thing up uh, to seven millimeters I used to do 10 but that would put the bottom of the logo too close to the curvature of the the end of the cup so now I do seven millimeters so I'm gonna turn the noisy laser head back on and uh, use that to measure seven millimeters And I hit my damn fingers. Stupid. Alright. We can do it this way. What I like about using this is when I hit the mark, see the, the laser lights dim? That's the black mark. When I hit the white mark, look, it brightened up. I don't know if the camera's getting it, but right now it's bright because on the white, right there it's dim. So that's right exactly on the 7. So that's pretty cool. A little trick to know when it when it dims, you're on the on the hash line. So that's where we're gonna start from. But I was kind of checking now. I'm wondering, and since this has so many curves on it, and I didn't mark top center bottom center 
there really is no way to see if it's um, perfectly square like we were talking about earlier so we're just gonna have to run it and then after I run it I'll measure it and uh, we'll see speaking of measure I need to go find my book and I don't remember what I was using for the circumference for these um, because they are quite tapered I did a lot of trial and error and figured out what the best circumference was so y'all know I like my images to be what they are on the screen so I might just show you how to do that too it looks like 270 so I'm gonna put it at 270 Image height is 46.8, so half of 46 is 23.8 is 0.4, so 23.4. 270 sounds familiar. So those of y'all that have not seen me do this before, basically what I do is go from the top down. In this case, it's going to be 23.4. I'll put a little piece of tape, then I'll frame it. And as long as the laser runs across the edge of that piece of tape, then we know we're good. Sometimes that's a little tricky. So, the 23 and a half mark is going to be right around this top corner. The tape is angled. So, as long as the laser dot comes down, and it's probably going to come in front of it, so it's going to be a best guess. Comes down to there, then I know I have my circumference correctly. If it does not, then I have to adjust it. I look like you hit it to me. Let's see that that's really too bright, isn't it? it? Makes it wash right out for you guys. Looks like it nailed that corner though. Let me get a closer look here. Stick my face right up here. Yep, alright. Nailed that corner, so I'm happy with that. Um that's really bright. Alright. Cool. Yeah, it's a little better. So I think we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and let it run. Um I haven't we haven't watched one engrave in a while, so what the hell, why not? We'll watch this one, and um, when I edit the video, we'll fast forward it so that it goes really fast.
Alright, so. Time on the stopwatch there was 10 minutes and 24 seconds. So, I'm pretty sure before they were taking 12 to 13 minutes, so I'm going to have to ask Daniel and see if there's something in this stepper motor that's making it go quicker, or if it's just something else making it go quicker today, I don't know. So, it's interesting. And, uh, again, we don't touch anything but the cup, which is hard when you got big clumsy hands. And the air assist is in the way now on this side, so I gotta be careful not to bang that. And then we spin, spin, there we go. And she's ready for the next cup. As long as I don't touch anything, the next, all of them, will be exactly the same. So, I'm gonna turn this off. It's getting late, it's like 3 in the morning now. So, um, I'm going to turn this off and we'll continue on tomorrow night. Um, not going to make you guys watch me do 102, but what I am going to do is we're going to have a sit down and, um, just do a recap and review kind of thing. Um, go over some of the highlights, some of the points and, um, just do a recap on this device. So far, I'm liking it. I like the setup of it. I like the feel of it. I love the tilt part. So pretty damn cool um, after I get done with this big batch I might do a review part two that'll be a quick one that will we'll go over some big items I, don't, I have a growler in the other room that I can do so I'd be curious to put that other piece on and and do a growler on here and, and uh, get something you know really big and heavy those are 64 ounce growlers so I'd be curious to see if the the handles can hold that so there you go guys there's a uh, Pretty awesome, uh, I always want to call them tilt mechanisms, but it's uh, advertised as, um, shit, it's late, <laughs> advertised as the uh, the modification, the rotary mod from a live pixel creates. So um, when I edit the video, I'll go over that on the uh, internet, I'll go over the website, and I'll show you all that good stuff about it. So, alright dudes, take care. Bye.